Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big P here. You know, don't you? You know, the voice of hardcore boxing. That's why you've tuned in. I'm joined today by legendary trainer from East Ham, the boy himself, Mark Tibbs. How are you doing, Mark? Lovely, Russell. Good to see you, mate. You okay? I'm all right, mate. I'm uh, I'm not looking as colourful as you in that uh, top, mate. <laughs> it's a bit bright. It's a bit bright, I must say, but... Um... I'll tell you what, I've I've been out training in Spain and I've had all dark and grey colours, so I thought I'd, I'd treat myself to something bright. I think someone give me this along the way, I think. I might have even pinched it off the line. Might even be Billy's, I don't know who it is. <laughs> He'll have pinched it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how have you been keeping anyway, Mark? Yeah, not bad, Russell, not bad. Not bad, mate. Been doing all right. Uh, been... Um, Training with Bill out in uh, Fort Ventura, Adam Bailey's gym, um, MTK's gym out there. It's a very, very lovely gym. And uh, I must admit, I've been to a few training camps now, and uh, that was one of the best, I've got to say. But, you know, if we had to get a fighter ready in this hotel room, we could. That's the mentality, you know, yeah. you got to have. But, um, no, that was a wonderful, wonderful um, place to, to train. Yeah. yeah. Warm weather training, Mark. Do you think it makes a difference in winter? Hundred percent. It's a. Uh, I mean, the, the climate, it, the climate in the Canary Islands that time of year is perfect, and uh, it's like, you know, you just it's just good for the senses and good for your bones, your muscles, and everything. It's, you know, you want to, you got more life with uh, in warm weather. You know, it's brighter and that. You know. Did Nigel Ben used to go train out there? Nigel Ben uh, used to train in Tenerife. Yeah, he used to yeah. train in Tenerife, yeah, in a place called Torreviscus and uh, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. I remember going there too and um, visiting my dad when uh, what, when when he trained uh, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what were we like over there, Mark? Yeah, it was good. It was a good setup. But I think at the time um, there was a company over there were looking after him uh, called Global. Uh, like timeshare company, and uh, they, they they laid out the red carpet for them, and uh, really looked really looked after them. But the Mount Tidy runs, uh, Mount Tidy runs, the hill runs were good, yeah. and uh, they they set up a gym in a squash court. As it happens, they put a ring in a squash court, and uh, that's where they trained. What are you now, trainer Mark Nigel? Uh, to be honest with you, um, I only went to. Uh, I only saw him train in Tenerife, and uh, yeah, I mean, my dad would soon tell me if uh, there was anyone. He, my dad's never even worked with lazy people, to the truth. I, I, if, if he has done, they don't last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Do you feel the same, Mark, about fighters that don't pull the weight in gym? Yeah, of course you do, because like you do it for so long, and uh, you do it for so long, and then you start seeing the cracks, and you think. You know, you're wasting your time. You know, you put it's people don't realize the time, time, effort, and the brain. If you want to, if you want to turn a fighter around or turn him into something, it takes time, you know, valuable time yeah. and, and energy and brain power if you want to do it properly. And, uh, and like. Yeah, so so yeah, it's uh, it's very time consuming and it's heartbreaking as well when you when they don't pull their weight, especially if they've got a bit of talent. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you worked with any anybody who you thought could have done better and they've moved on and it hasn't worked out for him? Or you have you seen any fighters who who you thought if only he'd have done a bit more and, and they just didn't go all the way? Yeah, quite a few, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shame. And obviously, yeah. your dad's your dad's worked with a lot of people, and uh, back in the day, and you'll have seen it all growing up. Frank Bruno, Charlie Magri, Chris Pyatt. Uh, did he did he work with Kirkland Lang? Not Kirkland Lang. No, not as far as I know. Were he at the same stable though? Wasn't he at the time? Because I think I've seen a picture of him in a gym with your dad, yeah. Nicky Duffy background, and okay. I'd have to check, I'd have to check that out. But I've never I've never heard my dad talk about Kirkland yeah. Lang. Yeah. We trained Frank Bruno, didn't he? What's that, mate? Trained Frank Bruno. 
yeah, he spent he had a bit of time with Frank Bruno and a uh, challenge for a world title with him. He didn't win it, but you know, I remember remember being there at Wembley Wembley Stadium actually. Yeah. Um, remember sitting there watching Sugar Ray Leonard run right in front of me and uh, run into you know to to watch the fight when the fighters come out. It was really nice. Yeah. He uh, he won every round, didn't he, Bruno? Until he got knocked out that night, didn't he? Was it Tim Witherspoon? Tim, Tim Witherspoon? Witherspoon, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, yeah. I, were, I were looking online. Uh, I don't know if this were when your dad trained him or George Francis, but Frank Bruno used to get up religiously every morning and do his run. And he was yeah. smoking about in a Mark II Escort back in them days with big speakers in it. And then he had a Ford, <laughs> he had a Ford Granada. Do you remember stuff like that, Mark? Yeah, my dad, my dad had a Ford Granada, but it was it was immaculate, you know. And uh, he had a Ford Granada. My dad, I think he did. Yeah, he did. He had a Ford Granada, Ford Granada gear, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but the gear, yeah. But he used to keep it immaculate. And uh, yeah, no, I, I remember when Frank when Frank had a uh, Granada too. Yeah, I do actually. He used to blast out the. Uh, I remember when he, him and Terry Lawless used to go on meetings or whatever, but I remember Terry Lawless used to be moaning, he used to have headache, I have to drive up north for hours and hours and hours, and Frank would be blaring out the speakers all the way there, apparently. But he, you, had, he had big, massive speakers. At back. I've seen a photo of it. I says to my mate, what's he got on parcel shelf at back of them? He says, pioneer speakers. You know, them yeah. big cross-axle ones, old school. Yeah, but no, but but Frank Bruno, Frank Bruno is a lovely man, you know, and um, yeah, he, he's older than me, obviously. But what, yeah. what I'm saying is how lovely this is. I remember being at Gants Hill. Gants Hill's a Gants Hill is a town on the suburbs in uh, in in Essex, um, you know. But I was out. I was driving. I lived in London at the time, but I was driving out, and I was I was I was in I was on a roundabout, big busy roundabout, massive big roundabout in Gants Hill. And then and I know Frank Bruno's in front of me, and, and I don't know what I did. He, he must have recognised me in my um, in my mirror because I don't know why. But you know, he did. He stopped his car in the middle of the street. He got out. He got out and come and shook hands. And obviously, I jumped out and met him halfway. But that's what a much of a gentleman he is, and a <laughs> lovely man. And that was in his uh, not far after his retirement. I, I, I remember. Yeah. yeah. He's a lovely man. I see him. See him. Last time I see him, I was coming out of a party in um, Martin and Tony Bowers' party. Um, they had a party at their house, and I was coming out with my mum and dad and my wife and my son. And uh, Frank was walking in, and it was nice to see him. That weren't too long ago, was it actually? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Do you see old, uh, Charlie Magri, Chris Payer, any of them? No, I was in Leicester. I was in Leicester with Dillian White a little while ago, and um, they was talking talking about um, Chris. Chris, and no, I saw I saw some pictures of Chris Pyatt on the walls up there, and I asked if he's about. And uh, but he, he was about up there, but he lived in the town a bit. I was out in the country a little bit, but um, I ain't seen him for a long, long while. Um, and uh, yeah, no, Chris. I see see Jimmy Mac the other day, and. Um, there was a lot of fighters. There was guys called David Den, Ray Katoos in them days, you know. Yeah. But like they was a lot older than me, but I, I remember them and I watched them, you know, religiously in in that Royal Oak gym. And there, there was many fighters there, you know. And I saw a fighter the other day on. Uh, I was watching telly here, for, I think. No, I was in in Spain with uh, with the boys and that. And I saw a film. It might have been it might have been the Cray film or one of them films. But I saw. A guy I used to box with when I was with Terry Lawless for a little bit, Adam Fogarty. He was a heavyweight, yeah. and um, and I said I was with someone in the room. I don't know who I was with now. One of one of Bill's mob, one of me, Billy, or, or one of Bill's mob. And uh, I said I know that guy, Adam Fogarty. I used to train with him. He was an heavyweight, and uh, he was with Terry Lawless. And uh, he went bang, bang, bang. Yeah, you're right. I said Adam Fogarty. Oh yeah, he was a good. He was a good. Um, he was a good. Uh, rugby player for Halifax too, for Halifax. But he contacted me a little while ago and uh, I was a good friend of him, Adam. So he was a nice guy because he lived, I lived in East Ham and he lived in, uh, he lived in, uh, he rented, he ended up buying a house in uh, in uh, Rumford in Essex. And uh, yeah, he was a nice guy. And he'd done a bit of acting in the end. Yeah. 
He's, he did have a bad record. He did have a bad record, as it happens. I'm not sure if he fought John Fury, you know. I'm not sure, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think he did. I think he might have done. I think yeah. he might have done. Yeah. yeah. Because I think he might have done, because when I talked about it in Spain the other day, someone brought it up. He was a nice fella. Nice fella. Yeah. But, um, actually, we was driving. I think we was driving. I'll never, I'll never forget, me and my dad, Terry and Adam, we was driving to Wembley Arena. I think we both was on the show. I think it was on. We we was both on the undercard, if I, if I can remember rightly, to um, to Gary Mason versus Lennox Lewis. But listen to this. But but Adams' fight fell through, and so me dad and that me dad and Terry was discussing how they're going to break it to him. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he, he he sold a few tickets and that. But um, so like I was sitting there listening to that, and I thought, well, oh, mate, you've just got to tell him straight. I see, not not to let the ticket money go to the fans. That's what I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you see out of Charlie Magri? Uh, very occasionally, because um, occasionally I see him now and again. Now and again, I, you know, I've seen him. I've seen him probably once, like last year. Yeah, bumped into him here and there. Oh, yeah. So he won a world title with your dad, didn't he? A WBC, didn't he? I think that was my dad's first, like, you know, involvement in world champion. Yeah, I was there that night as well in yeah. Wembley Arena too. Funny enough, yeah. Well, back in them days, it was uh, it was what it called the Empire or something or back then. The, the, uh, uh, the British Empire. Empire. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. It was no, there, um, there were that place. Sorry, weren't there in uh, Pally, London P Pally, was there something? Ken, uh, some, I forget that, Ali Pali or something, was there back in them days? There weren't that Ali, many uh, arenas, were there? Yeah, that Ali Pali was, uh, up, up, that was over Greenwich, where I think, Alexander Pavilion. I think yeah, that was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I boxed there on a Nigel Ben show myself. Um, I think versus Henry Walton, I think he boxed Henry Walton or, or Lou Gent, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Lou Gent? Yeah. Lou Chen, do you remember Lou Chen? He fought Nigel Ben, didn't he? Him? Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is, I boxed on the undercard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lou Chen. Yeah. Uh, do you do you feel that boxing's changed a lot, Mark? Going back to obviously you you you've been, you're steeped in boxing history. We've been obviously from where you're from, and and your dad being being you know around Terry Lawless and that. Back in them days, there were obviously the cartel, weren't they? They had a bit of a stranglehold on it, didn't they? You know, in the, the 50s, 60s and 70s, didn't they? Going, they were like passed about, wasn't it? And there were only really like three or four venues that you, they used. Do you feel that, obviously, Frank come in and he took them on, didn't he? You know, in early 80s, didn't he, to make a change. Do you feel that there's been a big change in the last five, six years? Yeah, of course it's changed. I mean, like everything changes, Russell. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's good for the. Uh, I think um, as a trainer, as a trainer, if you ask me as a trainer, because I can only talk as a trainer, yeah. I can't talk as, as as watching things change, changing promotions and, and whatnot. But yeah. as a trainer, uh, training certainly train uh, changed. For sure, and if if you if you pick and choose it wisely, it's for the better. But there's a lot of um, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, do you but, feel that uh, there's a lot of trainers nowadays that seem to be getting in and training pay per view fighters, and they've not put the time in? Do you feel there's a lot of that going on, Mark, because of social media? Uh. Russell, do you know what? I've been so busy doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I miss all that other stuff. And I mean that. I know I don't really focus on, yeah. you know, I only focus on, on my enemies <laughs> and my <laughs> job at the end. <laughs> you should be a politician, <laughs> Mark. You... When, I talk, when I talk about my enemies, who my fighters are fighting. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and that, so, yeah. All right. Where do you see Billy Joe going in the future now then with you? Obviously, he looks like he's got his mojo back. He seems to have a bit of a smile on his face and he seems to have his business head on this week. And he's not acting the goat and playing about and that. He looks pretty similar to when he fought, before he fought Lemieux. Do you, do you see him beating Martin Murray and going on to fight Canelo and your Golovkins, Callum Smiths? 
Well, Russell, listen, all I can say is he's had a wonderful, wonderful training camp and it's been faultless and flawless, yeah? Mm. It's been uh, very, very smooth. I've used that word already. It's been very, very smooth. Mm. And uh, I'm hoping and I, I'm very confident he's going to put on a, a brilliant performance tomorrow night against Martin Murray, a tough Martin Murray, because yeah. Martin Murray, um, you know, he's, a, he's an experienced veteran. And uh, he's a he's a warrior, and he ain't gonna lay down. So so we know that. But um, we've got to box him cleverly, and uh, hopefully we we get a few moments. And uh, only time will tell. But yeah, I'd like to think that he could move on from Murray, and obviously get them big fights because he's got a couple of years there left. And if he really really focuses, he he, he could be, you know, he's got he's such a such a he's such a such a. Um, He's a he's a boxing he ain't a boxing he's a boxing genius. What I mean is like he he's on the edge of a, being a boxing genius. It just takes a little bit of a, a lifestyle change just for you know for a couple of years, and that means he can still eat what he likes but eat good, you yeah. know, and yeah. trickle over and tickle over. And uh, he's been doing really really well. I've got to say, and um, he's always been a fantastic person to train and uh, and uh, he's a digger mate he's a proper proper he's he's a he finds it and he's a winner and he's a digger if you if you know what I mean by digger he digs he yeah. digs and digs but you know I think if he could if he could maintain a certain you know sensible weight and and, and trickle along he'd find more magic in his armory one million percent more magic that he he never thought he had does that make sense, Russell? Yeah, it does, yeah. Uh, which takes me back to, obviously, my mentor, Dennis Hobson. Uh, we, we've spoke at length about Billy Joe because when they went out to Olympics in 2008, Dennis took Jamie McDonnell with him. He'd just signed him. He, he'd lost twice. He'd just lost two fights. And he said, look, I'm going to take you out there with Terry Edwards and them. We're going to stay out there. For this. I think they stopped over there over a month. And I'm, I'm going to show you how these people eat, sleep and train. And on the way there, he, uh, he he made a big play to... He, he bought everybody a, a watch, actually, Dennis, but bought him a tag watch, all England team, G GB team. David Price, De Gale, Billy Joe, Frankie Gavin, uh, Darren Sutherland, is it jo uh, Joe Murray? James. Yeah, Joe James. James. James De Gale. Yeah, James De Gale, yeah. But I said, who did you want out of all of them? He says, yeah. well, top two, because James De Gale got the goal, but he weren't tipped to get the goal, were he? Because Groves had beat him in amateurs. Yeah. He said, top of my list, but top of everybody's list, were Billy Joe and Frankie Gavin. But Frank were the man then, wasn't he, Frank Warren? Yeah, yeah. He, he just yeah. tipped it to it. And that was Dennis's only regret. And he always used to say to me, he'll never get beaten, Billy Joe. So I said, do you reckon? He yeah. said, he'll never be beat. Oh, he, only person who can beat him is himself. Now, yeah. and that were a bit with Frankie Gavin, wasn't it? Because you worked with Frankie, didn't you? And he and yeah. he were like very similar, one is super, super on the borderline a genius, wasn't he? Well, Billy, Billy Joe, I'll never forget because when my dad trained Billy Joe, I'll never forget that uh, Billy Joe kept saying to me, Dad, Jim, 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 we've got Frankie Gavin, you've got to get him down, you've got to get him down. And because uh, he wanted to come and train with me, dad, and you know, us. And uh, and he did. He come down for a bit, and he, and he was he was a he was a very talented uh, South. He was a Southpaw, wasn't he? Frankie Gavin yeah. as well. Yeah, he was very 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 talented. But like where Billy where Billy likes hard work, I don't think Frankie did. Yeah, you know? and he and he just like like you couldn't get ten press ups out of him. Like you know, yeah. and 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 if he did, if he if he just strengthened his frame up a little bit. By using his body weight and being enthusiastic about it, yeah, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, being enthusiastic about it because to, to get him to to beg someone to to beg someone with that talent to help them be better in their craft mm. and they don't want to do it, it, it just drains every bit of life out of you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, do, do, do I make yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were going to say you make yourself clear, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were going to say, do, no. I, do I make myself clear, Russell, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, he was so talented. He was so talented. and uh, But even when you're talented, to be at the top and stay at the top, you got to work it, man. you yeah. got to work it. 
And uh, yeah, but that's uh, Frankie Kevin. Though he was, uh, he was a nice, uh, he was a nice guy actually. He's a nice person, and uh, he was a good guy. I know. I don't know if we if we ever had any fights with him, but um, he trained alongside us. We was, it was meant to be a couple of fights. There's a funny story I could tell you, but I'll tell you another time. <laughs> All right. Really funny story. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there is as always a good one with Frankie, isn't there? Yeah. I got Frankie up to uh, Dennis's office, and this is a true story. This we actually made. I said, I've got an idea for an IBO world title fight. We actually made a world title fight with Frankie and, he, and he, his team. They came up and it, we all set up and everything and date and everything, IBO world away. And that was my first sort of like big title fight that I had my own idea. And it, it collapsed with two weeks ago. And obviously, you know, our boxing can beat you down, can't it? You know, when you first start with yeah. it. And it sort of put me on a downer, but... I always raved about him and other some of my friends like Terry from from London who was a trainer at Fitzroy Lodge. He always used to he always says you've got to get that Frankie Gavin thing out, out of your mind because I saw him win that gold medal in uh, Chicago, you know, two thousand and seven. Yeah, and he yeah, never no, around, did he? Yeah, no, I don't I don't remember him in that, but no, I'm not surprised. But like I think he might have had, you know, it's, you know, it's not. He had his own problems, I guess. You know yeah. why he couldn't yeah. focus on, uh, yeah. on 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 what he was brilliant at. You know, but um, Billy Joe really, really rated him and really, yeah. really spoke highly of him and said how talented he was. It was just a shame to see him that he didn't really knuckle down. You know what yeah. I mean? When they were in EIS up here, you know, Billy Joe and Frankie, they Billy took a police chase up at a cliff <laughs> with Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> they took a chase. And uh, they got done, yeah. They got him. He's still doing that in Fort Ventura. No. <laughs> no, I'm talking like, you know what, something like our t- Dukes of Hazardic, what they reckon. <laughs> no, I I can you imagine him there in the England tracks of Billy and Frankie? Yeah. yeah. Billy, <laughs> wheel man. <laughs> okay. yeah. but, uh, but getting back to Martin Murray, uh, you know he's only been stopped once, hasn't he? I think I, I might. I has he once? He's a, he's a yeah. tough, tough man. He's he's you know yeah. you know he's very very tough. Not uh, Martin, uh, sorry, Golovkin won it. Golovkin. Oh, Golovkin, Golovkin. Yeah. Yeah. Did Golovkin? Golov- he went the distance with Golovkin, no? No, oh, no. He got stopped. He got stopped. He got stopped. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought um, I thought Martin should have won the fight. He fought he, he fought Sturm in Germany. Yeah. yeah and Abraham. And Abraham, and he boxed Martinez. Uh, Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Went out. Well, I remember the Martinez one, but because that was on an open air arena, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. O- over in uh, Argentina, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, um, he's a tough boy. He's a tough man. He's a tough man. But he brought some memories up the other day when we'd done the press conference because uh, he spoke about Oliver Harrison. and uh, Yeah, yeah. And, Great when, yeah, lovely man. Did you know him? No, I didn't. I didn't know Oliver Harrison. No, but what I do know about him is that Amir Khan never lost a fight with him, and he got sacked. And oh, he lost a fight with Amir Khan, and they let him go. And then he went with this other guy, and he got knocked out, didn't he? By Prescott. Uh, yeah, British Prescott, you mean? British Prescott iced him, didn't he, Amir? But he let yeah. Oliver Harrison go because the people were in the, in his in his advisor's ears, and I think that were a massive mistake. I think after Oliver Harrison. He's one of them guys that he went under radar with what he did in boxing. He was lovely guy. One of them guys that were hanging out at back of IFL every two minutes. Where he, 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 were, no. he was a trainer, wasn't he? An old school trainer. Do you know what, uh, Russ? What I did um, when when uh, my dad and Billy were getting ready for Andy Lee and yeah. we come back to Manchester, I, I went to Manchester a week before then. And then uh, I think uh, my dad said, Mark, can you get a gym up there? Anyone got a gym? And, I, and I, I don't know why I got in touch with Oliver, Oliver Harrison and made myself busy, got in touch with Oliver, Oliver Harrison. He made us so welcome and gave us the run of the gym. And uh, and he was really, really lovely. He was a proper, yeah. proper love, lovely spirit. And uh, But he left the gym to ourselves and uh, let, us, let us use it. No one else was in it. Yeah, really, really lovely man. And we spent probably five days with him. He was a lovely guy. Yeah. Probably, yeah. And obviously Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis have took that on now, haven't they? From and yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good, yeah. Aren't they? But getting yeah. back to Martin Murray, Billy. Obviously, that's the big fight tomorrow. Do you feel that there's a bit of pressure on Bill to knock him out and look good? Because I've seen a couple of things Eddie's said. 
on internet and he's saying Billy's got to look look good and blah blah. blah. Yeah, well, we all want him to look. We all want him to look good and, and that. And Billy's experienced enough and he, he's uh, he's got his own mind, but he he does listen to orders and instructions. If he thinks they're right, he knows what's right and what's and what's wrong. And uh, as I say, he's, he's a, you know he's a brilliant, brilliant boxer as we all know. But he can be a genius. Yeah. And, and, and there's and there's going to be he's going to wait. I think he's going to put on. A, I believe he will put on a performance where he's going to wake people up, showing what boxing is all about. Yeah. And uh, and uh, with all credit to Martin Murray, I mean, you know, he's a he's a biggish and he's tough. You know, what I mean, he's tough. We know that. We know that. And he ain't going to lay down. So we're, we're prepped really, really hard. We couldn't have prepped any harder. So, you know, we're ready. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, after this fight that Billy will go for Danny Jacobs before Callum Smith Canelo? Russell, I can't talk about <laughs> the future. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So, only because I only, only work what's in front of me. But yeah, no, I know, but, mate. Yeah. Um, Old school. You know, of, of the landscape, but you know, yeah, yeah, really yeah. got MTK and Eddie Earn, and they do the business, and yeah, you yeah. know, we, we fancy, but but you know, they you do keep, the business. Yeah, you got to keep your mind on the job in tow, aren't you? I suppose. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. Mark. Fair enough. You should be a politician, you Mark, with some of these answers you gave me yeah. today. <laughs> uh, All right, then. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. As always. And uh, I think I'm down your neck at Woods sometime next week, so I'll come and have a couple with you. All right, my friend? Give me a call. Lovely. All right, well, listen, you take care and all the best and thanks for coming on Porky's Corner. Thanks, Russell. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, that were... Uh, Local MP for East Ham of the Labour government, Mark Tibbs, politician. <laughs> now, I always try and push boundaries, don't you? But uh, he's a gentleman, in he, Mark? And I've got a lot of time for him. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll get it out as quick as I can. We can you can either wait 24 hours and have a porky uh, entrance, fancy entrance at beginning and a fancy ending and a few inserts, but we give an invoice for that. Or you can have it out straight away. So I'm going to put it out straight away for you. It's quarter to ten on a Thursday evening. So I'll get this out for quarter past ten. All right. So peace out.